Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to continue on and finish our Hello World program in our RISC-V assembly language. So we're going to add our Hello World string to the program in our data section, and then we're going to call the write system call to actually print that value to the console. So let's get right into it. I'm going to go back over to my virtual machine, and let's see, we were working in the hello.s assembly file, so I'm going to do vi hello.s and we already have the bare bones of our code to simply exit the program but what we want to do now is we want to add a secondary system call to actually call the write system call which is going to print a value to the screen but before we can do that we actually need to add the value that we're going to be printing so i'm going to add an entirely new section to my actual assembly program so i'm going to come down here I'm going to do O to create a new line and I'm going to do dot section dot data. And then this is where all of our string values or integer values or any different data that we actually want to use in the program. That's not our actual assembly code. That's where all of this data is going to go. And we can actually get this data by using different load and store instructions to actually take the address of this data and use them inside of our assembly code. So I'm going to create a new bit of data. I'm going to call this hello. So hello is actually going to be my label name, and it's going to point to this particular location in memory where I'm going to be storing my hello world string. Next, I need an actual data type for my string, which is going to be dot ASCII. And now I need the actual string itself inside of quotes, which is going to be hello world. And then I'll also print a new line here. So now we have the actual data that we're going to be working on, but we need to actually reference and call the write system call to print this out. So I'm going to add some new code over up here, because if you remember, these instructions are calling the exit system call, which is going to exit the program. So if I put anything after this, it's actually not going to run because the program's already exited. So we need to put this up here right below our start label. So I'm going to do escape and then O to actually insert a new line. We'll do a couple new lines. And if you remember from our previous video, we had to set up the processor registers to actually contain the different arguments that our system call needed, as well as the actual number that signified which system call we were referring to. So we're going to have to do the exact same thing if we're recalling the right system call. So I'm going to open up here and I'm going to go to the actual man page for the right system call. I'm going to do Linux man page right and have my reference right here for me and this is going to take a few more arguments than our exit system call had so first we have the file descriptor so where we're actually going to be writing the output to and we're going to be using standard out which is just one in this case then we need the actual buffer that's going to point to the string that we're trying to print out. And this is going to be our hello label that we had that's pointing to that particular location in memory. Then finally, we have our size of our actual string that we're going to be printing out. So we need to set up our registers to contain these values. And then lastly, we need to set up the A7 syscall register to contain the actual number that corresponds to the right system call. So let's start setting up our other registers first and just get this going. Let's go to our program and set up our registers. First one, we're going to have the first argument register and we're going to load the value one into that because if you remember, we have our file descriptor constant here and one is gonna cause us to print to standard out. So I'm gonna load that into a0 the immediate value one next our second argument is going to be the actual buffer side the buffer that we're going to be printing and this buffer is going to be this label that points to our hello world string so we're going to be using a different instruction to load this this is going to be la for load address and then we'll put that into our second 
argument register and it's going to be the label hello now i'm going to take a second and kind of step back and talk about these particular assembly instructions for our risk 5 architecture i'm going to bring up the specifications document and let's go down here so what I've been using is this li instruction to actually load an immediate or constant value into our destination register. But the interesting thing to note is that in our RISC-V architecture, we actually have these pseudo instructions and these basic instructions. So we can use the pseudo instructions, but the assembler is actually taking those that we're adding and translating them over into these basic instructions. So you could code in these basic instructions, but the assembler is already doing that for you. And this is a lot easier to write than all of these. So I'm going to be using the pseudo instructions in these tutorials. Now we can see if we go back to our code, we're using our li instruction for load immediate. This was our destination register, and then this is the actual immediate value that we're using. Then if we want to see what this LA instruction is doing, I'm going to go back to my reference. Let's find this LA right here. Then again, we're going to have our destination register, but then we have to have our label name or this symbol name. In our case, we named our label hello, so we're just passing in the label name hello to actually put the value into this A1 register. So hopefully that clears some of the instructions up a little bit. And let's move on to actually calling our write system call to print our hello world to the screen. Let's go to our write system call. The last one we needed is the size of the string that we're printing. So let's just count how many characters we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then 13 because this backslash n is actually just one character since it's the escape character and then n to signify our new line. So that's a total of 13 characters. So now what we need to do, we need to do load immediate, the value 13 into our third argument. That's gonna be our A2 register. We'll put in our value 13. So now we have all of this set up but we actually need to put in the system call number into that A7 register to specify that we're trying to call the write system call. So let's go back to our system call reference for RISC-V. And this is our table. So if we come over to the RISC-V 64-bit, we want to go down to the write system call. So I think that's going to be near the bottom since this is in alphabetical order. Here we go. So write right here, and then risk 64. So the actual number is going to be 64 that we're going to need to pass into our A7 register. So we know how to do that. We'll just do load immediate A7 register as our destination register. And then the value 64, I believe it was. Let me double check. Yep, 64. And then that is going to specify the actual system call number but we need to actually trigger our system call. So once again, we need to have this special e-call keyword that's gonna cause us to actually call this right system call with all of these specified values. So I think that looks good. So let me save this and then hopefully this will run and actually print hello world to the screen. So I'm gonna do escape colon WQ to exit vim. We need to actually assemble and create our new executable again. So I'm going to go up because I already have these commands up here. We have our assemble command and I'm just going to do the same thing since I didn't change the name of my file or anything. And then we also need to have our executable generated. So remember we have our LD command that's going to create our hello executable. And no errors. So fingers crossed it looks good. Here is our new executable. And what we want to do is we want to do Actually, I just realized something. We want to change the status that we're returning. Oops. Because in the previous video, I had set this to two. Let's just change this to return zero for everything looked good. So escape, colon WQ. Then let's add our changes, assemble, generate our new executable. So now it should actually return zero and print hello world to the screen. So I'm going to do dot slash, hello, 
And sure enough, we have our complete Hello World program in our RISC-V assembly. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we continued on using our RISC-V assembly language and we finished our Hello World program to actually trigger the write system call and set up our processor registers for the arguments that the write system call actually required. We then triggered our system call by using the eCall keyword and we successfully printed Hello World to the screen. We also noticed how we had the the option to use these pseudo instructions or basic instructions, but that the pseudo instructions were actually a little bit more human readable and easier to understand. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next video. Yes. Okay. We're getting there. Yes. Ooh, sheesh.